Hey guys, this is Sebastian aka Babascrobix for PokerVIP.com and today I'm gonna start my five part video series on high stakes poker which is part of the GG Poker Network which is an Asian network a um, lot of people talk about it currently about the GG Network and about the Asian Network playing with all the Asians um, and yeah without further ado um, I'm gonna jump into the action now. Uh, for what it's worth, this will be a five part video series, so lots of videos to come yet. Um, every video part will have a different topic, a different theme. The theme of this video will be like a uh, strat talk, in depth strat talk. Um, so we're gonna mainly focus on like strategy. Um, and yeah, the next ones will be different and it's gonna be an exciting journey, I hope. So yeah, gonna play two tables or 50 NL here. Mm. I will try to bring you the side of it nearer as well. So using a bit of the features as well. Um, so far, I haven't played a lot here yet, but so far it seems pretty cool. Like. The side looks pretty sweet, it looks pretty dope. The whole layout is pretty like good for the eye. Like I think that's actually a pretty important part. Like if you play on like a side where like you just hate staring at your screen and staring at like the layout of the side, it just doesn't motivate you at all to play, right? So that's definitely not the case here. I think the layout is actually pretty clean, pretty cool, and just enjoyable to play here so far. Also some other positive things about the site, I've had some issues with depositing my money on here um, and the support was really forthcoming and really helpful so that was pretty great. Um, they responded really fast and actually helped me. So yeah, that just as a little introduction about the site. Um, let's hope we get into a lot of spots, let's hope we get some action. Let's hope we can throw out some of these sweet smileys. <laughs> they are probably a backbeat goodbye. Haha. <laughs> hello, hello guys, hello. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna open for 2.5x. Gonna. Oh, I limped. Gonna make a little whop. Oh, wait. I think I limped, right? I think I. No. For the walk. It looked like I limped there for a second. So far there has definitely been some limpers. Like on every side you will find those like limpers and like generally like recreational looking guys. Um But so far I can't draw two big conclusions of like how many of those recreationals are on here. I haven't played enough to actually make an educated statement about that. The King 7 would have opened the folder to me, else I'm just gonna fold. If one of these guys decided to limp, I would overlimp the King 7. Ah okay, it just showcases. Ah okay. Now I know why I thought I limped. It's so like if you get a walk, like if everyone folds. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're just gonna check here, trying to realize our equity. Um, we do flop a pair and a backdoor flush draw. Probably not gonna call a bet, especially not such a big bet. Um, would have liked to see a turn, but not for that price. <laughs> we can look what turn would have. Oh, uh, Ace King? Uh, it wouldn't have been the best one, not. <laughs> so there you, you saw like a little feature of the side. Like the rabbit hole, which actually gets displayed as a rabbit, which is kind of cute. So this guy joins with a non fold stack, gonna mark him as a recreational or potential recreational already. You can always look like, for example, the guy to my left at the left table and to the right at the right table, um, Spewer. Like you can, I, he was like sitting basically at every table, being like full stacked and having auto reload on. You can be quite sure that he's gonna be a rack. 
Like that doesn't have to mean that he's going to be a good rag or like a good player, but it means he's going to be a regular. And the chances are pretty high that he's not going to be too bad. <clears throat> and you see this guy like limping instantly, you can tag him as a recreation. Oh, that's a pretty multiple pot. Ah, damn. That would have been a good flop for him. Obviously, folding pre flop, facing a 4x isolate and a limp. The limp again, by the way, is still sometimes limp raise. Should never completely discount that chance. And of course, 9 5 is just not gonna get played with the 4x isolate. 9 did off suited. That's a pretty ugly hand. Gonna make a little. Uh, uh, that's a bad beat. Uh, that's a bad beat. You get nine days off suited. Oh, we get a walk. I mean, that's that's pretty. Uh, I'm running so hard. Where is it? I'm so good. <laughs> Jesus, I'm getting carried away with the emojis. <laughs> okay, um, pretty easy squeeze here for value. Sizing wise, I'm not gonna go to my general size. I'm gonna pick up a bit smaller so this guy can still regem. So this guy is sitting at around a bit more than twenty pounds. My standard sizing would be um, around 6, so I was going a bit smaller than that. We obviously would get it in if needed if needed versus the shorty on the right of the table. Uh, I'm gonna fold the queen jack off suited here quite obviously. Even versus the fish it's just not a great hand, especially once he opens UTG. He seems to be pip and PFR quite a bit, but Yeah. He was getting it in with ace check off before by the way, so I would have really glad he got it in with ace queen if he decided to regem at a similar stack tap. For if we also had ace check off in that hand, so he's chopped it. <laughs> Ace 9 off would open this in the cutoff. Not gonna open from MP. Would need some really bad players behind to open it from MP. Use, I mean, probably never open it from MP to be honest. Close to never. Each part, as usual, is gonna be th around 30 minutes long, by the way. So you can be prepared for around that length. But I guess. You will already have the video length in front of you <laughs> as you're watching this. Uh, 9 6 off. This is a 2.5x from MP. Kind of close. 9 7, uh, not off. Suited, of course. 9 7 suited, definitely defend. 9 6, definitely on the close end here. Um, kind of don't mind either way. I'm uh, gonna opt to fold because so far I don't know if he's like recreational or not. Um, if he was recreational, I probably would pump it into my calling and defending range. Whereas an unknown, I'm just gonna opt to make a somewhat tightish fold. Guy joins with 20 blinds. Instantly mark him as a recreational. King Jack off is gonna be a 3 bet versus the rag or an open if folded to. Would have been a 3 bet. Uh, small line versus button versus my German fellow. So we see a limp, a limp. Uh, I'm on eyesight quite big here, trying to push some fold equity with the pocket sevens. And right here, I'm just gonna opt to. Yeah, I'm gonna see we're relatively big with my king jack. Lots of weaker pairs that can call, can get some protection from some ace highs, and so on. Okay. A lot of weekends can call me basically. You could decide to check raise here. It's not the worst play. I would generally take king queen as the bottom of my check raise value range. But it would not be bad to check raise king jack here either. He would um, bet call a lot of worse hands if you check raise. So it's not that bad. It's definitely worth a consideration. Um, kind of dynamic turn. Definitely improves some hands like 9 8, king 10, 7 10. That being said, our hand is still good enough to value bet. I'm gonna value it relatively big. There are some worse king axes. There are a lot of hands like 7 8, 6 8, pocket 8 that can call again. On the left hand, we over limp versus a limp. 
call the one third on the flop or basically a min that. Turn, we still have like a middle pair and a gut, turning a gut short. I'm gonna give this another call. Interesting river on the seven. Definitely not the best river. The backdoor club's also getting there. It's getting pretty thin to value bet now. So we have two options now. We either check fold or we just block. I'm gonna opt to block this one. Definitely can get called by worse hands, like a 10-9 or like a king-9 type of hand. Um, I don't think he's gonna bluff that often if I check to him. There just aren't that many bluff combos left. We also do block the jack of diamonds. So I would not really want to check call. I also can't really go for big value, so I'm just gonna block. It's basically um, generally a good strategy, opening the queen-9 and with the recreation and the big Blind. I'm gonna open, make a really loose, loose open here. The wreck so far hasn't really played back as well, so I'm gonna assume he's maybe a bit on the tighter side. Queen 9, we're just gonna opt to uh, start with a small seabed on both tables. Pretty standard, I would say. Um, so, yeah, generally you wanna block in spots where you don't expect a lot of folds from villain. <laughs> we can check very simple spots. Gonna come back to that topic in a second. I'm gonna call both with top pair after silly betting one third. Um gonna call in both hands. Here we do have the back to straight or back to flush draw as well. We do have the top pair. And now he bets relatively big. Um we do block the nine of hearts as well. I mean it's not that big. Half pot in both. Mm. I think I would opt to just let both hands go here. Blocking draws in both hands, not beating any value at that point in both hands, and would opt to call with better kickers. Like I would call ace eight on the left, and I would call king queen on the right. Um, and obviously, he, he, both of these players can have plenty of trips combinations, and they can sometimes uh, play a better top pair that way. And in both hands, we were blocking draws. And on the queen nine hand, there just weren't a lot of natural draws on the board to begin with opening these hands. So yeah, what I was saying before, you generally want to block that in situations where you don't expect a lot of bluffs if you check to your opponent, and there's if there's a reasonable amount of worse hands that can call you. Um, facing a 3-bet here, relatively small 3-bet. Um, gonna still opt to fold in these positions. Haven't seen him 3-bet before. It's a hand that's like, severely dominated by 3 betting range. Yes, it was a pretty small 3 bet, but the ace check off suited is just not gonna play well enough. I would rather want to 4 bet there than uh, defending, or like calling rather. Uh, but to 4 bet, I would at least need some sort of read at ease. 3 betting a decent amount. Like, this is a guy that's like overall 3 betting like 10% and so on, or like in that position is 3 betting like 8%. This is such a guy I would. Up to four with my hands. I would never call my hands. Besides, if he's like a complete lunatic, then I might be able to call, but generally four with a folding. Base check off to there. And the standard is to fold. So yeah, I would definitely advise you to look out for block for like spots where I'm blocking my videos. Because I think blocking is an extremely powerful tool in the current meta. Because people are just not bluffing often enough if you check to him. And they are completely stubbornly uh, uh, hero calling a ton versus box. Yeah, they go to get a good price, but basically the matter of the fact is they just never fold any pair versus a block. So you can extract a ton of value with blocking. Um, you just have to know when to use it. So they get it in here, the box nines versus the a7. That seems pretty loose from the a7. I mean, I guess it's not that loose. It was for like, what, 10 blinds? Or actually 20 blinds, I guess. A bit less than 20 blinds. Um, so this guy is again 4x isolating. We're in position and we have a fish that's probably gonna limb call. We have a really playable hand being in position to the isolator. Um, I'm gonna opt to call here. So this guy limbs. <coughs> I'm gonna take him as a recreational. This guy isolates once again. We're gonna just set mine here. And right here, you just bomb seabirds. Yeah, we have a backdoor flush here and a gutter, but we still have a player behind who can potentially come over the top. And the sizing is just too big. Um, heads up, I would probably call here, but with the player behind as well, I'm just gonna let it go. Uh, and the pocket threes. 
Severed soft pots with an underpair, even with the diamond. For one third I would have probably peeled one, but for like the half pot I'm just gonna opt to fold. You see on such runouts, which will actually happen quite often, you're gonna be counterfeited. I would call fives plus there basically. Uh, the king deuce would be a pretty loose open. As said, so far he seems a lot of on the tight side, so I'm gonna mark this pretty loose open here. And the other guy also seems on the tighter side, so I'm gonna make two loose opens here. Um, generally, when I last checked my database, at least on poker stars, in this formation, I'm gonna have to check raise this board with this end. Um, people are folding over 50% versus steel, small one versus big blind. Which is probably not going to be that different here. Which kind of means you can relentlessly steal this step. Oh, turning the nuts. I don't think he's going to relentlessly bluff after we check the flop. So I'm going to bat my hand now. So, especially if you open like for 2.5x as I do, you really can steal a lot if they fold over 50% of the time. So we're making a standard uh, 1 3rd secret on the left hand table. Still have the nuts here. Gonna still opt to bet my hands. And picking up an open mender and a flush draw, I'm gonna barrel my hands. Betting the nuts here. Taking it down on the left and hoping to get raised on the right. So the eight. 3-6 spot, by the way, is an extreme hotspot for to go ahead and check raise. Gonna, gonna give him the nice hand. Yeah. Um, so, once you do check to them in that formation, small man versus big man, or in any formation, they're gonna overly step. They're gonna step a lot versus your check. Which is correct, because people are generally not protecting the checking range and not check raising enough. So they are correct in what they are doing, that they are gonna overstep. Which how do you counter that? How do you counter that they are stabbing a ton there? Well, you do check raise a ton. And you're generally going to try to look for like really dry boards that are disconnected and low. So you're not going to try to check raise a jack 10 3 2 turn board, board but you're going to try to check raise a board like 10 deuce 3 rainbow or even a board like king deuce 3 rainbow, right? Because they're just going to like stab any ace high or like a lot of hands. And you can basically check raise air versus these type of players that are overstabbing. And I mean in that scenario we had a pretty dry board, a low board, and not really connected board. And it, we didn't even have air. We obviously had a knock open ender with an over card to the top card. So we have a lot of equity there. So with our hand we have a kind of no-brainer check raise. Um, but we could check raise way lighter there. Like on that board, like 863, you could easily check raise and like jack 10 off suited there. And print a ton of money there. Uh, King 9 deuce, I'm just gonna opt to 1 third versus a white BB range. Just trying to take it down, protect my equity, realize my equity, get maybe some worse, a better hand to fold like pocket threes on the spot. Yeah. So check raising is a pretty like advanced concept. I would generally not advise you to do it too blindly and to dabble too much with it. It's not necessary to beat your stakes. But it's something to look out for, especially if you have a head start and you see something like step versus check uh, being extremely high or in general flop bet being pretty high, you can definitely exploit that by check raising a ton, um, 20% or more or like 15% or more. I'm gonna defend here, it's pretty close with the queen jack off suited versus uh, UTG um, 1.5x, uh, 3x open, sorry, excuse me. I would, sound, I would check raise here maybe versus the button range, versus the UTG range or MP range. I'm not going to check raise this hand, especially because he also bets pretty big. And as said, he seems on the tighter side, so... Um, yeah, if you would have bet like a third on the flop, I probably would have still check raised my hand with the backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw, two overs. Just have a decent amount of equity, can get him with a lot of better hands. A lot of barrel uh, barrel opportunities. Oh, flush over flush, that's sick. But yeah, given the sizing and positions, I, I don't really like the checkers of the queen jack as much.
gonna post a bad beat because the guy had just had a bad beat my last hand just want to ship it so sick <laughs> Uh, folding here, of course, with the ace twos. Makes me sick to fold. <laughs> Chen 5 off. Now that would be way to lose open open. Lowest and widest I would go would be Chen 7 off suited there. Ace 5 off will be a pretty standard open on the left hand table. If folded to me, of course. King 10 also going to be an open if folded to me. Pretty happily with the big blind being a bit of a fun player. Um, sort of fun player limbs. There's a fun player behind and relatively tight guys behind as well. I'm going to open to make a pretty loose isolate here. This is potentially a bit too loose, but I don't mind it with the big blind being so bad and the original limp also being pretty bad, and the guys behind being pretty tight as well. Uh, the ace 5 given it's three ways, I'm just gonna check back, realize my equity, and uh, pot control with the hand that doesn't really want to get a lot of money in. Same on the turn, still could have the best hand, just want to realize for free. King 10, I mean he's probably gonna have a decent bit of like pocket 6s, pocket 5s, and like hands like ace, queen of uh, hearts. I want to try to get him off those hands. Checking back ace 5, river the nuts, it's pretty good. Second nuts essentially, but I mean essentially the nuts. We're going to bet pretty big here. If someone has a diamond, they're not going to fold. So we're just going to roughly pot it. With the king 10, we're just trying to get him off some better hands. And we also have a nut gutter and a, uh, open, uh, we have a nut gutter and an overcard. And now we're just going to check back and realize our equity, trying to bring that queen ball, the king, the 10 could potentially be good. Maybe we have some bluff holds, like on the ace we're going to definitely bluff our hand. He's now going to lead a lot of good hands as well. So once he checks, he kind of filtered out a decent bit of hands. So we're going to try to get him off a 9 or hand like pocket 8 or something like that. I don't think he's necessarily going to fold a jack here. But maybe we have some fold equity versus a jack. It's potentially possible. The ace should be a relatively scary card. Um, I don't really think he folds a jack, but I would assume he folds a 9 or like 10. And like of course pocket 8 with the spade is going to fold now. Um, even hands like king queen beat us still and those definitely fold. We get him off the same hand as ours. Um, yeah. And maybe we even get him off a jack occasionally. He has the ace and he max 10 calls, so that's pretty, um, so yeah, we probably would have gotten him off a jack, which, I mean, once he max tanks that hand, we can be quite certain our bluff is pretty good there. And his flop call and pre-flop call are pretty ambitious. And he called the flop like a backdoor flush draw for like a pretty bad, pretty big bet, so that's pretty ambitious. Um, but yeah, sure. And then he rivers top pair and doesn't lead. So he wants to give us rope to bluff, but then we bluff and he actually like tanks for quite a long time. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty weird. So I was kind of right in the assumption that he is a somewhat passive player and a scared player, but even scared players kind of make like dumb calls and like not that his river call, but his flop call and pre-flop call are pretty bad. Yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with my line there kind of showcases that he's definitely gonna float hands like eights and sixes on the flop I guess and we can definitely get him on those on the river. I would still assume some of his better ace acts like ace queen would lead river. Um gonna three red here with the queen nine versus a min race. Versus the button range queen nine suited us in pretty well. He calls Pretty bad flop, just gonna check fold. Interesting turn. I'm gonna still opt to check. I'm gonna delay, delay, bluff river on a decent bit of cards. The king is a pretty good card for me because I have a ton of ace king as played. So I'm gonna try to represent the king. And I don't really have to bet that big because I'm essentially trying to get him off a king, worse than a king, which I should generally achieve. 
And if he has a king, he's obviously going to call us. But we also do a decent job at blocking some of the king axes, like king queen. And we at least get him off ace highs, and we get him off hands like deuces. And we can potentially even fold him off pretty decent hands, like a seven or something, if he ever has that. Some would lose opening up to check eight, but both of these players are not really free betting at all so far, so. Seems pretty straightforward as an open. Decent hand to fold, the jack is off suited. Pretty silly to break every uh, to break all the odds of the king ten and then get the best bluff river and he has a kind of random ace. That's unfortunate. Especially once he went to the tank, I was reasonably confident that he would end up folding. What? That's poker. <laughs> so confusing. <laughs> Ace line off. Gonna go into the mark from this position. Oh, we have a playable hand on the right hand table. Hopefully, we can see a interesting flop. So I've been pre betting Spewer a decent bit so far, so I'm just gonna flat this hand. It's kind of performing better if it's a flat anyways. Flopping a backdoor flush draw and a gut shot. I'm just gonna step around one yeah, one third here should be sufficient enough to get him off the range I target, which would be a range of pocket sixes, pocket fives, those type of hands. He's gonna have a decent amount of check calls, that's fine. We have a decent amount of equity to realize. We have our overcut and our gut shirt and the back of the flush draw. The flop bet already was printing, so now on the turn we're just gonna check down and realize the equity we have. Gonna bluff on a spade river. Not bluffing on this river, just gonna check back. Yep, don't think his hand is generally gonna fold. He played his fine. Uh, we did get to realize our equity there, so. Pretty happy about that, and we certainly have a decent amount of fold, equ uh, fold equity on the flop. For example, like um, he's just not really gonna balance his check range there on the flop. He's just not really gonna have a ton of like uh, sets or two pairs or straights at all. So we can definitely stab our hand there without a doubt in my mind. And there are a lot of good things that have like realizing our equity. With top A and a limp pot, I will opt to I will opt to call once. I'm not ecstatic about it, but it seems okay to call once. You can definitely step a lot of white hands. With the ace 10, we could go for a check raise. We can also just go for half pot bet, get called by probably all pairs, and get floated by some other hands as well. If he decides to raise, it's pretty scary. Easy fold with the once the flush gets in and another overcut gets in, easy fold with the Bad at this point. Pretty annoying spot with the ace 10. We kind of wrap a pretty strong range here. He's kind of only wrapping fours and deuces. I have the back to flush draw as well. I get a pretty decent price. Um, I don't think he necessarily has jacks and queens because I think those hands generally 3 bet free. He maybe could occasionally do it with a worse 10. I want to peel one street here and see what the turn brings because we also have the back to flush draw. And a backdoor straight row as well. So we do turn a gut shot. So on the turn, it's gonna kind of depend on how much he bats. I'm generally not looking to stack off my hand, of course. Making a loose open on the left. Oh, check. Okay, we're gonna check our hand as well. I don't think we're beat at this point. So we're just going to go into bluff catching mode, even though we block some of the diamonds. I still think he can have a reasonable amount of diamonds and could potentially turn some other things into a bluff, like queen jack of clubs would be a hand he could potentially bluff. And on this river, even as played, he could value bet the same hand. He could occasionally show up with king 10 and value bet that. 
I think the king seven on this dynamic. Yeah, this is weird. Pretty weird line. The deuce also further reduces uh, value combinations. So I'm just gonna opt to call him down here. Doesn't really make a ton of sense. This line is kind of wrapping pocket jacks, but why is that not betting turn? I'm just gonna call him down here. And he does have what he wraps, kind of pocket jacks. So pretty weird that he doesn't isolate that pre. I like doesn't three bet. That's definitely a three bet hand. Should never be in range his hand. Um, yeah. Pretty unlucky there to run into pocket jacks. And also, why is he not betting turn? I mean, he he, he can get a lot of value by betting turn. But I mean, I'm not too worried about it. Like we got to realize both of our suites of equity. Like we still have a reasonable amount of equity there. Uh, on the flop versus his hand. We can sell it an ace, we can hit a 10, we can run a runner flush, we can run a runner straight. We have a reasonable amount of equity there. And yeah, on river you see he's value betting jacks, he raised jacks on a flop for value. So who is to say he's never doing that with like king 10 or ace 10? I can't really make that assumption that he's not doing that. With the 7 9, pretty standard flop range c bet and then just checking down, trying to win. Um, so yeah, I can't really make that assumption with high confidence that he's not value betting worse on the river and that he's not value raising worse on the flop and his line just didn't really offer a lot of better hands and even pocket jacks was severely discounted mainly because he didn't pre-bet pre and why would he not bet the turn of his hand so i don't know he played his hand pretty bad but that's fine we made a bluff catch we were wrong on it that's poker um so yeah, we reached the 30 minute mark, I'm gonna sit out now and hope you enjoyed this part, hope you guys like uh, high stakes poker and hope you will be back for the special next parts. There, I'm, I can tell you there will be some special events, some special videos in the next few parts. It will be exciting. I'm gonna play the last hand on the right hand table and gonna piece it after that. Oh, they are taking a decent bit of time here. But now I'm committed to waiting, I guess. <laughs> Probably gonna get dealt 9 boost off. Gonna be like, wait, why did I wait so long for that hand? Okay, so that was Sebastian for Poker VIP. See you in the next part. Peace!